Welcome to Cyber GMBC. As we are doing ministry virtually, now that we are all engaged in this pandemic, COVID-19, our building in Westland has closed doors, but the good news is God's church is always open. Our ministry has broadened into cyberspace as we have gone viral. We welcome you to the Cyber GMBC Worship Experience. Father, precious Savior, Holy Spirit, we come to you this morning thanking you that you thought we were worthy enough to be saved. Thanking you, Lord, for yet one more day. Thanking you, Lord, for our life, health, and strength. Thanking you, Lord, for this time and this hour. Father, we pray your Holy Spirit rain down upon us this morning. Father, just send your healing balm throughout this place today, for you are worthy to be praised, Father. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised, Father. We thank you that it's in you that we live and move and have our being, Father. We thank you, O oh God, for your precious gift, Father. You gave us first your image, Father, in the name of Jesus, and then you gave us your son. And we say thank you. Father, we come this morning just praying for those on this Father's Day, Father. We pray for all our men in the name of Jesus. We pray for our, our sons, Father. We pray for our fathers. We pray for our nephews and uncles, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you bless them and anoint them with your Holy Spirit, Father, that you give them hope, Father, where they feel defeated. We pray, oh God, that you just lift them up and magnify them as your precious ones, Father, in the name of Jesus. For only you, Father, can restore unto them the years that the canker worm has taken, Father. So we stand on the foundation of your word, Father, knowing that you will do abundantly above the, all that we can ask the thing, Father. We come this morning, Father, praying for those who have fathers that have transitioned, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray your Holy Spirit will give them comfort today, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will lift up bound down heads and broken hearts in the name of Jesus and that your Holy Spirit will engulf them and lift them up. Father, we come this morning praying for those with various illness and diseases, Father. We know that you are able to restore, Father. We know that you are able to heal because your word says that you are a healer. We pray for those that are, have not accepted you, Father, as their Lord and Savior, Father. Your word says that you will do a new thing, Father. So we're praying for a new thing to be done in their lives today, Father, in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, Father, and we magnify you. We pray today this morning for our pastor as he almost comes help before you to bring us the word, Father. Help us to have ears to hear, Father, in the name of Jesus and a mind to work. We bless your holy name today, Father, and give you all the praise and the glory, for you are worthy to be praised. You are our Father, and we cry, Abba, unto you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and the precious blood. Amen. It's done, yes, what I shall be, I already am. It's 
done. God has worked it out on my behalf. My eyes may not see it. By faith I receive it. It will manifest. It's already done. Hear me say it. It's done. What I
Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give, to be a blessing. Lord, we ask you to bless that what we give be used to continually build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask now that you bless us, keep us, lead us, and guide us. In Christ's name, we do pray. Amen and amen. come now thanking you for the victory before we go to war for Lord we can shout now because the battle has been won we come this morning to have words of encouragement inspiration correction challenge to our fathers, our potential fathers, to those fathers who have stepped up, to those fathers who are slacking, to the fathers who proudly own their children, to the fathers who shamelessly refuse to take fatherhood. But Lord, we also thank you for the men that have stepped in and fulfill the role that is not theirs biologically, but Lord, is something about their manhood that would not allow a child to be without a father figure. And we say thank you for them as well. Give me a word this day. Anoint me and fill me with power. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, giving honor to God ahead of all life and to all of you, my brothers and sisters. We thank God for our choir that have blessed us. Amen. For our musicians who I am convinced they don't know how to behave. Amen. Amen. They don't mind misbehaving. Amen. And we thank God for them sharing their passion along with their gifts that the Lord has given them. Now we want to be fair. I'm an equal opportunist, and I know that you may not have to make reservations today. And you may not have to stand in a long line, but I'm still going to get you out of here in good time. Amen. 
Amen. You got a lot of time to go before game seven. Amen. That many folks didn't think was even going to get here. But that's a sermon for next week. There is a word that is found in the first chapter of the first gospel recorded in the Bible. That is the gospel of Matthew. Chronologically, it is not the first Bible, but the way it has been listed, it is the first book. It says, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he was considering this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until after her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. I'd like to use for thought this morning, what do you do when you are not the father? What do you do when you are not the father? Over the years, I have seen the increase in the popularity of determining paternity dominate the television world. I must admit that it is extremely important for boys and men to know the truth. In most cases about the paternity of the children they are said to have fathered. And I understand that many fathers were not planned actions but rather unprotected engagements. I need to say that again. Many fathers were not planned actions, but unprotected engagements. However, I have always heard if you fail to plan, you have already planned to fail. The popularity of paternity has truly dominated the Murray Show. Young folks, you may not believe this, but at one time, Murray Show was actually a variety talk show that had a full range of topics that was discussed on the show. Back then it was called the Maury Porbridge Show. Now I will say that between 90 to 95% of Murray is now dedicated to paternity revealing and finding out who is or who is not the father. Not to have a complete monopoly on the subject matter, Detroit's own Judge Lauren Lake Paternity Court is solely dedicated to discovering if the boy or man in doubt is indeed the father. On this show, it was not always the girl or woman who called the show to prove paternity. Often, it's either the person who believes they are not the biological father or the one who believes they are the biological father. And oftentimes, potential grandparents are responsible for seeking the results and finding out the truth. Well, I must admit that I am an avid watcher of these shows <laughs> because it's important to understand the culture, but to see humanity in all it is because it's truly preaching material in so many different ways. We must all understand that Maury or uh, Lauren Lake's paternity court created did not create this situation of determining the children, paternity of children, nor is this a brand new issue. Long, long ago, before there was ever a Murray or Lauren Lake paternity court, there was an old saying, mama's baby, daddy's maybe. 
So we are not going to play like this is a brand new issue that only involved this generation and these young folk. The only difference is back in the day, these shows did not exist on television. Help me, somebody. However, there was always a mother or grandmother who would look at the child and could determine the DNA without ever taking a blood test. Well, why is there even a need for this? In a perfect world, there would never be a need to determine who the father is. Boyfriend and girlfriend would get married, husband and wife would remain faithful to each other, and therefore, there would be no need for determining the paternity of any child or children. However, in an imperfect world, things don't always go in this order. Often there are only boyfriend and girlfriend who wanted a child but did not want the commitment. There's also the husband or wife who get caught up outside of the marriage. And sadly, there's also the situation where only pleasure was on the menu. But because of a lack of thinking beforehand, a child is the byproduct of a good time. Over the years, my attitude and understanding have moved from being myopic to being more objective. I used to think that in these cases that the fathers were simply trying to deny paternity because they did not want to be bothered with the mother or they simply wanted to avoid paying child support. However, after watching enough shows, I've discovered that not every mother was totally honest. I soon discovered that there were plenty of reasons why a mother was trying to pin a baby on a brother. I'll give you just a few of them. First of all, she was in love with him and believed by having a baby with him, it would make her stay in, it would make him stay in love with her. Can I say that again? There were some women who loved this man so much that she believed that if I give him a child, I'll be connected to him, and he will love me the way I love him. Secondly, others felt that she needed to compete with his baby's mama by evening up the score and having a child by him and then expecting him to feel the same way about her child as he feel about her child. Another, she was in a marriage or committed relationship and stepped out, got caught up, as Usher say. <laughs> Didn't want to lose the marriage or relationship, and so she figured she had a better chance of acting like that child belongs to him. But then thirdly and fourthly, she decided that she needed to choose which person she thought would make a better father when she truly had no idea who really was the biological father. Well, I've watched plenty of episodes where good brothers who stepped up to the responsibility and altered their lives to become fathers soon and painfully discovered that they were not the biological father. The episodes that tick me off the most are the ones where the mother declares that it can only be him. I ain't been with nobody else. I'm 1,000%. Sure, because I ain't been with nobody else. I ain't no trick. I ain't been horn around. And then the minute the DNA results reveal that the accused is not the father, their case of selective amnesia goes away, and then they say, yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> now, the reason this is an issue is because they were shamed to admit who the father is. But can I help your sisters out today? This is Father's Day, but I got to help my sisters out right quick. Don't mix 
DNA with a brother that you would be shamed to have father your child. It's just that simple. Do not mix DNA with a brother that you would be shamed to have a child with. If he already had children, and you see he's a lousy father, please don't think because you can make him put his phone down <laughs> that you about to change anything. Y'all can YouTube put your phone down by Erica Badu. Because there are some sisters who think that if he get a dose of me, I'm going to make him act right. Can I keep it real with you this morning? There's a whole lot of sisters with act right stuff. Well, the brother ain't act right at all. Now, this is not to say that a father cannot mature and change, but the reality is, as Fritt Wilson used to say, what you see is what you get. And I can only come up with three ways a brother could find themselves in this situation. There could be more, but I can only come up with three. First of all, he knows from the beginning that he's not the biological father. But he decides that no child should be fatherless and takes on the responsibility of being a father figure to the child. Secondly, he's under the assumption that he is the biological father only to discover that he is not the biological father. And then thirdly, he knows from the very beginning that there's a potential that he could be the father because he knows he was not the only one engaging at the time of conception or that it was a chance hookup. Okay, I'm gonna break that down for y'all. A chance hookup is when the chance presents itself and you hook up. A lot of brothers know what I'm talking about. See, brothers are visual creatures, and sometimes our vision gets us in trouble. We like what we see, but we have to learn that everything that looks good to you is not good for you. Again, again, God's way and the best way is for husbands to become fathers, but I understand that life happens, and every situation of fatherhood doesn't necessarily happen this way, and there are plenty of husbands who thought they were actually the father. This Father's Day 2016, I want to talk to the unsung heroes who are often overlooked and rarely appreciated. These are what we used to call the stepfathers, but I don't like that word step, so I like to say blended fathers or those men who willingly stepped up to fulfill the position of father to children that were not their biological creation. So this Father's Day 2016, I'm going to encourage the biological father to keep up the good work or to start doing what you know you should do. However, I was led to encourage the other brothers who are fulfilling the role of father even though the children are not their biological creation. This morning, we're going to look at what's usually a Christmas text and discover that it will also work for Father's Day. Our text takes place 2,048 years ago when a brother named Joseph is engaged to a PYT and tenderoni by the name of Mary, only to have her tell him they needed to talk. And every brother in here know that when your woman in your life tells you you need to talk, it's rarely good news. In this conversation, she shares that she's pregnant and they have not yet to copulate. And so he's thinking about the man who would dare leave his DNA in his fiance and that his virgin is no longer fresh as the undriven snow. 
But because he truly loved his fiance, he wasn't going to promulgate their business on Facebook. He wasn't going to tweet it. He wasn't going to Instagram it, even though it appeared that she had just broken his heart and destroyed his world. He was too mature, too mature to put it on Facebook. He was just going to send out some notices of cancellation about the wedding and mention that, you know, sometimes things just don't work out. Uh, he was aware that according to Deuteronomy 22, he could have had Mary stoned to death, saving him the embarrassment of being known of as the brother whose woman played him. Now, I can't imagine with all the thoughts that were running through his mind after receiving this incredible, unbelievable news. No doubt before he lay down to sleep that night, this issue was on his nighttime prayer list. He dreamed, had, his dream had literally become a nightmare. He had waited 93 years to get married and start a family. And before he could even get his fiance going good, she pregnant. Bought the ring. They didn't pick out the reception hall. Figured out which synagogue they're going to have the ceremony in, who they was going to invite on the A list and the B list, and just if we run out and we need somebody to sit, where they going to sit. Go through all of this. And she got the nerve to come in and tell him, I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Come on now. Joseph was a regular guy. Ain't nowhere in the world you going to tell me you pregnant and you and I ain't did nothing yet and you going to tell me the Holy Spirit. So after turning and tossing all night long, and then the Lord answered his prayers and addressed his concern. The Lord sent an angel to tell him that it was all good, that it was cool in the game because Mary wasn't lying to him and that she had passed the lie detector test. The angel called him by name and heritage and told him to go ahead with the wedding plans. The angel told him not to cancel neither the caterer or the florist. Go ahead to the tuxedo shop. Tell Mary to meet me at the altar with your right dress because it's going down. For the child she's carrying is the fulfillment of the prophecy that you know all about all your life. And your wife was chosen to be the mother who would give birth to the Messiah. Even though this baby would not be his biological son, he was to treat him as his own son because God does not make mistakes. The child she was carrying was not another man's child, but his DNA would be spiritually insimulated, and God had major plans for his son. Now, there are two things that you can actually do when you discover that you are not the father. First thing you can do is leave the entire situation. There are many men who have discovered that they were not the father. And it was so devastating to them that they had to leave the entire situation. The deception of the mother who knowingly tried to pass a child that she knew was not his off as his was just too much to stomach and he left. And I have seen many episodes where brothers just couldn't handle the lies and did not want to resent and mistreat the child because of the actions of the child's mother so he bounced. Now, I will say this, if you find yourself in this situation and discover that the lie and deception is so overwhelming that you don't want to mistreat the child, then perhaps you need to bounce. No child should be mistreated or abused because of the actions of their parents. Can I say that again? No child should be mistreated and or abused because of the actions of their parents. Usually it's easier for the brother to leave when the mother knew and tried to deceive him. 
it's generally harder when the mother had no real idea. Now I will never advocate destroying a family, but for the sake of the child, if the believed father is unable to love the child and accept the child, then it's truly best to leave the situation instead of mistreating or abusing the child who was not responsible for who and how they was created. Here's the other choice and we out. Learn to love the child as your own. In most cases, especially when there was no true effort to deceive the brother, it becomes hard for the brother to simply walk away from a child who you got up with at night, you fed, you held, you changed the diaper, you clothed them, you spent quality time with them, acting as though they were yours, and now you cannot act like that was in vain. In reality, it doesn't take DNA to be a father to a child. It only takes DNA to create a child. I think I just said something. It does not take DNA to father a child, to be a father to a child. It only takes DNA to create a child. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of brothers who fulfill the role of father who did not create the child but has been the best thing that has happened in the life of that child. <laughs> Joseph is a classic example of a man who decided to stay with the mother and raise a son that did not share his DNA. It wasn't rocket science that he had enough faith in God to trust what he was told. And instead of questioning the angel or telling the angel, stop tripping, he decided to be obedient to the words of the Lord. The angel told him that he was going to have a son as his earthly father, which meant that he was not his biological son. He was given the respect and honor to name his son. Joseph named him Jesus because he had saving work to do. The very name he was told to give this baby boy would describe exactly what his responsibility would be to all of humanity. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. I really commend Joseph for being a respectful husband who wasn't going to put down a sister even when she had enough evidence that it appeared that she had really dogged him out. Can I keep this thing real? I'm truly glad that Joseph chose to be obedient and accept Jesus. That's a sermon in there, y'all. He chose to be obedient and accept Jesus. So I lift up our fathers who are willing to step up and to be fathers to children who have no biological or DNA connections because there is a heart connection. And see, I've learned that heart connections are stronger than DNA connections in many cases because there's always persons waiting and wanting to share their love with some child. And unfortunately, there are biological parents who could care less about the child they have. God bless all brothers and fathers who have made heart connections that have inspired you to love the children that you know are not yours biologically because you have made a heart connection. We need fathers, men who will step in and be in the lives of young folks. We need fathers that will be in the lives of young boys and young girls. Now, let me say this. If you're single and you're ready to mingle and you got children, you have to be careful. You have to be prayerful because everything in breath and bridges is not for you. Can I say that again? Just because he wears jeans. It may have some long shoes. <laughs> that don't mean anything. I'm going to be real this morning because too many sisters are being duped by the okie doke 
in bringing unworthy men in the lives of your children. You got to be careful because there are some men that will leave you alone and mess with your daughter and your son. You got to be careful. You got to be prayerful. And then if the Lord sends you someone who is trying to fulfill the role, you got to let them fulfill the role. You can't get all touchy. You ain't none of his daddy. You ain't got to listen to him. If he's feeding clothing, helping keep a roof over the head, keeping it cool when it's hot, keeping it warm when it's cold. If that brother don't get no respect, you and your child need to bounce. Both of y'all, all y'all need to bounce. Now is not the time to be picky ticky tall. Now is not the time to act all funny because there are some things that only a man can spot in a boy. I'm not taking anything for single mothers because I know single mothers do a wonderful job, but a single mother can never be a bad father. At best, she can be a great mother. You see, dogs don't grow up to become cats. And kittens don't grow up to become dogs. It takes a man to teach a boy how to become a man. And if the biological one has no interest, there ought to be some, particularly in this church, there ought to be some good brothers around that a mother can go to and say, I need help with my son. And the brothers ought to feel comfortable enough to be a mentor to the son. Now, what that means, brothers, you got to have a tight relationship with your wife. I'm going to be real. Now I'm out. You got to have a real relationship with your wife because you don't want your wife to think that she's trying to move in through her son. If it didn't happen, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> there are some sisters who just need help because she's dealing with a teenage boy whose hormones are going, and there are some things that she can't explain to him because she don't know what it means to wake up at attention. <laughs> she don't know what that means. It takes a man to teach a boy about that situation. Help me, somebody. And if you have someone that's willing to help, let them help. Too much catering and babying our boys, hindering them from becoming men. He's going to have to cry sometimes. He's going to have to be disappointed sometimes. He's not going to get his way all the time. Sometimes it takes tough love. I know that's your baby, but he needs to be a man one day. So when you have been blessed to have a male figure, a father figure in your life, whether it's a cousin, whether it's a, a grandfather, whether it's a nephew, whether it's a brother, an uncle, whoever it may be. And that's what I love about the church because God provides all you need within the church. If you do not have it at home, you ought to be able to find, I can pound out at least 12 good brothers right now. And I can just do this who will be wonderful examples of manhood to teach our boys how to become men, how to dress like a man, what a real man does. A real man go to work. He ain't sitting around trying to sponge off no woman, talking about it's hard out here for a pimp. No, it ain't. Pimping is easy. You ain't doing nothing. doing a thing. 
But we need some men to teach our young boys, if you're going to be in control, then you got to go to school. You got to educate yourself. You got to stand up and be a man. You got to learn what it means to hold a job. Learn what it means to be committed to something. Teach them how to treat young ladies. And oftentimes, fathers, they learn from us. So if you ain't ever saying I love you, if you're not ever making kind justice to your wife or your significant other, don't expect your son to do any different. Children do what they see more so than what they hear. We need men to realize the effect our behavior can have on our children. Because you don't want your daughter to grow up expecting to be mistreated. You don't want your daughter to grow up expecting a man to dog her out. Expecting a man to whoop her behind. Expecting a man to run around on her. You don't want her to grow up believing that's the way it should be. Nor should she be accepting that she ought to be considered a queen. And she deserves the very best from a man that's not going to lay his hands on her unless it's like Johnny Gill in the right way. And he's going to love her and treat her as though she's important to him. We got to set the examples. Fathers got to show our sons, this is how you talk to a lady. This is how you respect her. And show his daughter, don't allow anyone to mistreat you because you're my daughter. And so if you don't want nobody doing that to your daughter, don't do it to nobody else. Because whoever you fooling with, she's somebody else's daughter. I'm done. If you were blessed by the worship experience and would like to have prayer or to join the GMEC family, please go to our Facebook page and inbox us or to our website, www.gmbcwestland.org. Go to our contact bar, drop down to become a disciple, click. We have our new discipleship ministry and preachers ready to welcome you, to serve you, and bring you into the GMBC family. Also, we thank you for your giving and pray that you will be a giving disciple. There are various ways to give your tithes and offerings, Bill Pay, Givelify, PayPal, and Zelle. You can also mail them to the building or drop them off into the mail slot at 29066 Eaton, Westland, 48186. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and to follow us on Instagram. We pray that what you have just experienced was a blessing for and to you. Our prayers go out to those on the front line battling COVID-19, those infected by it, and the families of those whose lives have been claimed by. May God bless you and keep you.